On today's episode, I'll be going over all of the Chicago Blackhawks' latest signings ahead of their season finale against the Philadelphia Flyers. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Thursday, April 13th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And real fast, whether you're a first-time listener of the show or even a consistent listener and just haven't done so already, please do me a huge favor. Go and show some support real quick. Go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is 100% for free. And while you're there, make sure to smash that like button down below, comment, and also turn on those push notifications so that you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. And for you audio folks, you can also go and follow the show 100% for free wherever You may be listening to your podcast. Make sure to be downloading all of the latest episodes. You can also go and leave me a review on either Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, which I would greatly appreciate. Just want to say thank you, everyone out there, for all the support. All right, enough of that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day. As you all know already by the title of today's episode and by the intro, I will be going over the Chicago Blackhawks' recent signings that they've made here in the past couple of days. And what I wanted to start with was the announcement that 2020 second round pick Drew Comesso has officially signed his three-year entry-level contract after wrapping up his junior season with Boston University. And Comesso was a huge part of of the Terriers success this season, a big reason why they were able to reach the frozen four in Tampa Bay. Comesso was actually named the most outstanding player in his region after giving up just two goals in those two games to help lead Boston to the frozen four before they ultimately ended up falling short to a loaded Minnesota Golden Gophers team. But Comesso had another really solid season at Boston University. He ended up with a 24-8-0 record in 34 appearances this year to go along with, <clears throat> excuse me, a 2.46 goals against average, a 9.13 save percentage, and two shutouts. And kind of just like we saw in his sophomore season, funny enough, Comesso and BU both got off to a little bit of a slow start this season, but then Comesso went on a rampage to close out his junior year, ended up winning eight of his final nine starts with a 934 save percentage and two shutouts. So a heck of a way to close out his collegiate career and in total in his three years at Boston University, Comesso posted a 43-22-4 and four record with a 2.57 goals against average, 914 save percentage and three shutouts. And after basically being the starter for this team the last three years while putting up those numbers, I, I real that's really why I was expecting Drew Comesso to make the jump in to elect to turn professional after wrapping up this year because, you know, he had been the guy there for the last three years, really been the starter and just had a ton of good experiences. I just don't know what more he really had to prove at that level. So that's why, as I've talked about on the show many times here in the past month or so, Uh, that I expected Drew Comesso to wind up signing his entry-level contract, and that's exactly what ended up happening. He's actually going to be uh, joining the Rockford Ice Hogs for the completion of this season. He signed a professional tryout with Rockford. I don't think he's going to get in any game action or anything, um, but likely just going to get some practice reps and get some feels of the professional level with uh, a lot of his future teammates. But yeah, I thought this was just a clear-cut next path for Comesso in his development, right? He's just got so many good experiences under his belt already, not only with BU, but on the international stage for the United States as well. Uh, We saw Comesso represent the United States at the Olympic Games a year ago, and that actually went really well for, I think he was still only 19 years old at that time. He's 20 still 
at the moment. He'll be turning 21 later this summer in July. But yeah, at the Olympic Games, Comesso got two games worth of action, and he actually uh, only gave up two goals there as well, with one game uh, being a shutout for him. So a lot of good experiences at BU internationally. I know he didn't get to play for the United States at the World Championship, but he did travel with that team and, you know, just kind of understanding what that atmosphere was like. I certainly don't think that can hurt in Comesso's development. So yeah, for me, this just made too much sense. And I'm super excited to see Drew Comesso take that next step in his career. And with this now being official, Comesso electing to turn professional makes for a pretty intriguing uh, pipeline for the Blackhawks in net the next couple of seasons. Looking ahead at what we could see in goal for the Blackhawks as an organization next year, you got to remember Peter Mrazek is still under contract through the end of next season. And Alex Stalock is an unrestricted free agent. And while he was outstanding this season, one of the best goaltenders truly in the NHL when he was healthy, with Comesso signing his ELC, I just don't think there's going to be room for Stalock to come back because Ar Arvid Soderblom, while he is a restricted free agent, I'd be hard-pressed to think the Blackhawks aren't going to bring him back. He's been very impressive in his first two years with the organization, and I think everyone agrees that he's ready to be the backup for the Blackhawks next season. So I could very well see the, the tandem in the NHL for the Hawks being Mrazek as the starter and then Soderblom being the backup. And then in Rockford, that would leave Jackson Stauber and Drew Comesso, which is a pretty good one-two punch down there as well. So for the Blackhawks to now have Soderblom, assuming they reside him, I really think that's going to happen. Stauber and Comesso all now at the professional scene. It really has to make you excited about the future in net for the Chicago Blackhawks moving forward these next couple of years. All right, coming up in just a moment here, folks, I will get into Jared, the bouncer Tenorti, receiving a one-year contract extension recently as well. But first, I need to talk to you all about game time, which is the perfect place for last-minute ticket deals. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, and game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sporting events, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And I've been using game time since I was like a senior in high school, a freshman in college. I've been using it for almost 10 years at this point, basically well before uh, they were an advertiser for lockdown and they seriously are the easiest and the cheapest way uh, to purchase tickets. I also love how they give me images of my seats along with event cancel cancellation protection on every event. So make sure to go and download the game time app, Create an account and use the code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps for $20 off your first purchase. Again, go and create an account when you download the Game Time app today and redeem the code LOCKDOWNNHL in all caps for $20 off. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed, Game Time. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Getting into segment two, let's talk. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, that was brutal. Let's talk about uh, defenseman Jared the Bouncer Tenorti, who was uh, set to hit the market this summer as an unrestricted free agent until just yesterday the Blackhawks announced that he had signed a one-year contract extension with a $1.25 million cap hit through next year. And listen, I'll admit, when the Blackhawks first signed, uh, not signed, when they claimed Jared Tenorti off of waivers from the New York Rangers back in October, I wasn't really thrilled about the move, and I didn't really understand why the Blackhawks did that. But I'll admit, I, I was wrong about Jared Tenorti. And listen, it's not like he was a stud or anything for the Blackhawks this year. No, he wasn't a, a top-pairing guy, but he certainly was better than I would have expected him to be when the Blackhawks first made this move. And mostly, I, I, you got to be impressed with the warrior-type spirit out of Jared Tenorti this season. I mean, uh not only did he play a, a tough and physical defensive style role, but he also just battled through every injury known to man, basically, to get back on the ice this season. And he did it willingly. Like, let's think about everything that Jared Tenorti went through this season, right? From uh, taking a skate blade to the face, which caused him to get like 50 or 100 stitches. And then just a couple of days later, after getting back from that, he takes a slap shot to the face from Rangers forward Sammy Blay. 
Uh, Tenori ends up fracturing his jaw, loses like 15 to 20 pounds because he can't eat anything. He can only drink smoothies, uh, gets back out there on the ice. And in like his first or second game back from that, he's dropping the gloves and fighting after just recovering from a broken jaw. I mean, uh, not something I would recommend, but something that Jared Tenorti seems to be uh, quite willing to do because it wasn't the only time that he fought just coming back off of that injury. Just an absolute fearless guy out there. Uh, unfortunately, he's dealing with a hip problem as of right now, which is uh, going to force him to miss the season finale tonight against the Philadelphia Flyers. But um, just a, a incredible job done by Jared Tenorti this season when he was healthy and um, again, just kind of a selfless role, being a big physical defenseman, which the Blackhawks needed on their back end of the season. He also blocked a ton of shots. I mentioned he mostly played in a defensive role. I believe he had the lowest offensive zone start time out of any Blackhawks defenseman this season. And when you actually go and look at some of the analytics for Jared Tenorti, they're pretty respectable. He was one of the better shutdown defensemen for the Blackhawks when he was in the lineup this season. So good to see the veteran journeyman, 31-year-old Jared Tenorti, uh, get rewarded for his sturdy play for the Blackhawks this season. You could tell he was very respected by his teammates, obviously respected by head coach Luke Richardson as well. He talked to the media recently and really spoke highly about the bouncer and you know, definitely one uh, mentioned that he would love to have Jared Tenorti back for next season. So good to see Tenorti get rewarded. He's been a guy that's bounced all over the place in his career between the AHL and the NHL. And in fact, the 44 games that he played in for the Blackhawks this season is a career high for him at the NHL level so far this season. So good to see Jared Tenorti get rewarded, like I said. And he actually gets a, a pretty lofty deal based on uh, – because of how the Blackhawks are, are needing to reach the salary cap floor for next season. I, like Jared Tenorti for any other team in the NHL. And listen, I respect what he does, but he's not going to get $1.25 million, uh, even if it is for just one year out of any other club around the NHL. The only reason he got that is because the Blackhawks are saying, hey, we appreciate what you did for us this season. Here's a nice little bump up. And oh, by the way, we don't really mind throwing money around right now because we're going to hit that salary cap floor. So I think that just also kind of goes to show you how the Blackhawks are going to go about things this year. And, you know, we, we've heard that um, Max Domi could be someone they look at bringing back because obviously he was very respected by the Blackhawks fan base and coaching staff as well. And the Blackhawks will be willing, uh, will be capable of giving him a, probably a better offer than anyone else across the NHL will because they have so much money to spend at this point in time. So just kind of a snippet there as to how the Blackhawks are going to be handling things this summer. Don't be surprised if a couple other guys get a little bit more money than maybe they necessarily should uh, based on their financial situation at this point. But I do want to talk about how with Tenorti now officially coming back, it does make things on the back end a little bit more interesting for next season because now the Blackhawks have Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, Jared Tenorti, and Nikita Zaitsev signed under contract for next season. And Zaitsev is the one of those four that is the most likely, obviously, to be a buyout candidate. And that actually might have to happen given the structure of how things are going to shake out for the Blackhawks because uh, that would only give, you know, three other, <clears throat> excuse me, roster spots open for opening night. And looking at those four, obviously three of them are right-handed defensemen, Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, Nikita Zaitsev. The only lefty that the Blackhawks have signed on through next year at the NHL level is Jared Tenorti. And, the interesting part is there are a couple left-handed defensemen in the prospect pool that are trying to make that jump up to the NHL level next season. Alex Vlasic, I think, looks like uh, he's pretty ready to be a full-time NHLer next year. Same with Isaac Phillips. I don't know if he has all that much more to prove at the AHL level. And if the Blackhawks weren't in a tank situation right now, I feel like Isaac would probably be up with them. And then there's Wyatt Kaiser as well, who... Apparently, uh, according to Scott Powers, the Blackhawks are trying to get him uh, to be an NHLer next year, too. So I personally think that Kaiser, it wouldn't hurt for him to spend a year down with the Rockford Ice Hogs, kind of like we saw with Alex Vlasic this year. I think they can go that same path with him. But obviously, it's all going to be up to how Kaiser looks this summer and how well he performs during training camp and all that stuff. But with those three all coming up, 
Plus, you got to remember Caleb Jones is a restricted free agent. And based on how he's played so far on the top pairing with Seth, I I think he's been really good. And I just talked about this a couple of days ago. It's quietly been one of the best, if not the best pairing for the Chicago Blackhawks this entire season. Uh, Plus, with Seth obviously going to be here for the long haul and potentially being the next captain of this organization, you know, it would be a nice little thing to do to keep his brother around. And I do think Caleb has been good enough in the second half to warrant another maybe one-year deal as a restricted free agent this summer. So we could see Caleb Jones being part of the mix as well. That's another reason why I do think Nikita Zaitsev is going to get bought out. And then one thing not to forget about, too, is 2022 seventh overall pick Kevin Korchinski has a really important decision to make this summer about his future as well. And after lighting up the WHL once again this season, he's in the midst of uh, a postseason run with the Seattle Thunderbirds. I don't know if he necessarily needs to go back to Seattle next year as well. Now, I do believe he's only eligible to play in the NHL or the WHL, so maybe they don't want to rush him, and maybe they do send him back to Seattle. But I'll tell you what, in the preseason back in October, Kevin Gorchinski looked close to being ready to play in the NHL. And listen, I know it's the preseason. I know it's different from regular season style, but Kevin Gorchinski looked like he fit in really well, and based on the speed and Uh, His first pass ability, I mean, he made a a lot of nice plays in the preseason that showed that his game uh, is pretty far ahead already at this point. So wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world if Korchinski elects to turn professional as well. It's going to be potentially really crowded on the blue line for the Blackhawks next season, and I'm going to be really interested to see what moves they make now that Jared Tenorti has officially signed a one-year extension. All right, before I wrap up today's show, folks, I do want to talk for a moment about the Blackhawks season finale this evening against the Philadelphia Flyers at the United Center, which could also be the last time we see Jonathan Taves suit up for the Blackhawks. And it kind of feels like with everything going on regarding the tank right now, Taves' final game potentially has almost been kind of put on the back burner for the moment. I feel like it hasn't really reciprocated with all the Blackhawks fans right now. And honestly, it still feels like it kind of hasn't reciprocated with myself yet either. It's just like, I'm almost numb to it at this point. Patrick Kane's gone, obviously. We've been expecting this kind of to be the end for Jonathan Taze for quite some time. And now that it's here, it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of a weird feeling. But uh, with this being potentially Taze's last game, I had the Taser. Jersey instead of the Caner, number 88 hung up on the wall today. It only felt felt fitting. And if this does wind up being the last time that we see Jonathan Taves in action with the Chicago Blackhawks, I just want to say thank you to the captain for everything he's done for this organization. And I'm just so grateful for growing up a fan of that team, the best Chicago Blackhawks run in franchise history and for all the memories that are, you know, forever going to be ingrained in my mind and everything that I'll always cherish about this organization. It obviously wouldn't have been possible without the efforts of uh, number 19, Jonathan Taves. And there are just so many moments that, man, I'll never forget. I'm not going to go on the whole speech here today because if this is, the finale for Jonathan Taves, like we all expect it to be. Uh, There will be obviously an episode dedicated to him and my favorite memories and moments of his entire career and just a deeper dive into his historic Hall of Fame career. I'm going to save it for that, but just want to say to all you Blackhawks fans, listen, I know there's not a whole lot to be tuning in for right now, but this could be the last time we see number 19 at the UC and Uh, While we do need the Blackhawks to lose this game tonight against the Flyers, I'm not going to say, you know, let's send Jonathan Taze out with a win, but it would be cool to see him at least, you know, find the back of the net for the Blackhawks here tonight, especially after getting ripped off in that game on Monday against the Minnesota Wild, where it looked like he had scored a goal, the UC had erupted, and then the officials called it back after determining the Wild had touched the puck on a delayed penalty, which didn't even know was a thing. I've never seen that called one time and I've been watching hockey for like 15 years now at this point. So it would be cool to send Jonathan Taves off if he could uh, send off with, you know, one final goal at the UC and uh, leave the fans erupting for him. But yeah, sad and weird times to be a Chicago Blackhawks fan is could be the last time after what, 16, 17 years that Jonathan Taves plays in the game with the C on his Jersey 
for the Chicago Blackhawks. Just a, a really weird feeling going into today's game. But as far as the Tankathon standings, obviously, as I just mentioned, the Blackhawks need to lose this game tonight against the Philadelphia Flyers to have any chance whatsoever at finishing in last place. The Flyers are also pretty terrible. So another matchup here between a couple of bottom feeders, and then also the Blackhawks are going to need some help from a couple of other teams at the bottom as well, which, you know, you can't feel all that good at, good about at this point in the season. So Looking at how things are kind of shaping up at this moment, the Columbus Blue Jackets are still the team in last place. They control their own destiny with two games left on their schedule. They have 57 points, while the Blackhawks and the Ducks both have 58. Columbus is the one who holds the tiebreaker as well, so they have control over everything. And they are going to be taking on uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins on home ice this evening. By the way, the Penguins got eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs yesterday after the New York Islanders won their game against the Montreal Canadiens. The 16-year playoff streak, the longest streak in any professional North American sport, has officially been snapped, and that's what you get Pittsburgh for losing to this Chicago Blackhawks team at the most crucial time of the season. They didn't deserve to make the playoffs. They lose that game, and now they are officially out. That's what they deserve. They'll be taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets tonight. Hey, if they could do their part and lose this game somehow to the Jackets, it would mean a lot and would be a huge makeup for all of us Blackhawks fans. And then uh, also the Blue Jackets are the only team out of uh, the three here at the bottom that will be wrapping up their season on Friday instead of here this evening as they'll uh, be on the back end of a back-to-back -back at home again against the Buffalo Sabres. Then for the Anaheim Ducks, they're tied with the Blackhawks with 58 points. They're in second to last, though, due to the tiebreaker. They'll have their season finale tonight against the Los Angeles Kings at 9 p.m. Central Time. So that could be one to keep an eye on late at night for all of us Blackhawks fans. The Ducks have lost uh, 12 consecutive games at this point. Would be very nice if they could snap that streak tonight in their season finale uh, against the Los Angeles Kings. The Blackhawks are going to need to lose this game against the Flyers in regulation to have any chance whatsoever. They're going to need some help from uh, both of these teams here at the bottom. Asking both of them to win feels like a very tough task, but I'm going to keep my fingers crossed here. It's the final day of the Tankathon standings watch. Well, I guess technically not the final day. Tomorrow could be important if the Blue Jackets, uh, or I guess if the Ducks win tonight and the Blackhawks lose, then tomorrow would be the final day. But Either way, I'm kind of excited this is all coming to an end. I'm sick of tank watching and rooting for my team to lose. It's pretty frustrating, but um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, everything shakes out when uh, the regular season comes to a close for the Blackhawks and Ducks tonight in the Columbus Blue Jackets manana. All right, I think that is going to wrap up Thursday. April 13th episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show and make sure to go and follow the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast for free wherever you get your podcast and to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube and you can get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each and every day. Thanks again to everyone out there for making Lockdown Blackhawks your first listen. Now for your second listen, go and check out Game to Game NHL Western Conference. Every moment, every top performance, and every result. Lockdown Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL's Western Conference with local analysis that only Lockdown can deliver. Make sure to check it out. It's available on Odyssey, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So until tomorrow's episode, that's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.